what's up guys today we're going to be going over my top 10 weapons to get from the witch queen dlc in this video we'll be going over the 10 weapons i think will be the best for not only this season but future seasons with solar and r3.0 and be going over the rules i'll be looking to get on them so let's go ahead and jump straight into it with number 10 with the recurrent impact which is the stasis lmg from this season i wanted to put a lmg into this list because they're being buffed for this coming season and if you already have a good lmg that's gonna be good enough but from this season this is the new one so that is why i put it on the list and there are some pretty cool rules you can get in the left you can get subsistence then you can get something like frenzy one for all headstone if you're making a stasis build even firing line could be kind of interesting in the right situation but more than likely just one for all and a subsistence or headstone would be the ones you want to go for or if you want more ammo you could even try something like field prep moving on to the number nine slot is gonna be the submission the raid smg which is a kinetic 900 rpm that comes with some pretty cool rules i wish there were a few better ones so you can get subsistence plus frenzy or sub plus demolitionist those are gonna be like the two rules to go for but i wish there was osmosis if there was an osmosis and left of this weapon it would be one of my favorite smgs in the game so for that it's only number nine because it is pretty good but i think for all the 3.0 subclasses you're gonna be wanting a elemental primary for the most part and that is why it's so low on this list even though it is a really good smg and before we move on to number eight a quick word about today's video sponsor this video was sponsored by raid shadow legends it is time to party raid shadow legends is celebrating their third anniversary as one of the top rpg games out there but seriously this game started so strong from the very beginning and never slowed down one of the coolest things about this game is they're constantly putting out new content and never really slowing down. For example, let's check out some of the amazing things that Raid Shadow Legends did throughout those three years. First, the Doom Tower. This game mode introduced a whole world of new and terrifying bosses to slay. Sprawling over 120 levels, the Doom Tower brought exciting new challenges for seasoned players. As an RPG, Raid started with hundreds of unique characters and bosses, but that didn't stop them from adding more and more along the way. The designers really went the extra mile making all of these amazing characters. And if adding new characters wasn't enough, last year Raid added a whole new faction. The Shadowkin are one of the coolest looking factions in the entire game. And of course we cannot be talking about Raid without the biggest addition to the game. And I'm talking about the Hydra clan boss. It is without a doubt the biggest and baddest boss the game has ever seen. This monster has multiple heads, each with a different ability and requires a different strategy to destroy. And even if you manage to chop off one of its heads, it can grow back. It can be quite challenging, but it rewards the best artifacts in the game. Honestly, I can keep going on and on about Raid Shadow Legends. It really is the perfect game for all player types. You can play it on the casual level, or you can dive in for hours upon hours and be a hardcore player. So it's no wonder they're celebrating three years, and I'm sure they'll be here for multiple years to come. So what is new in Raid Shadow Legends? Well, this month, Raid is celebrating their third anniversary, and it's going to be huge. They're kicking things off with free gifts for everyone, then adding in a bunch of new content and events. Raid is already a huge game, and with this whole anniversary event, it makes it an awesome time to join the Raid community. So what are you waiting for? This is the best time to get started, and if you're not playing Raid yet, hit my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen right now, and you'll get a special huge B-Day package worth $40. We're talking three free champions at once, plus 10 magic XP brews, 10 force XP brews, and 10 spirit brews. And if you're a new player, all of this treasure will be waiting for you right here. And if you're an existing player, you can still get a huge bunch of free birthday gifts worth over $25. And for that, all you have to do is click the link and enter promo code three years raid. And it's just that easy. Go ahead and click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. At the number eight spot, we have the Insidious, which is the raid pulse rifle, which is a four round burst, which is one of my favorite types of weapons the game has ever had. I made them in Forsaken when they first got introduced. And this one can come with a lot of really cool and unique roles. So right off the bat in the left, you have Dragonfly or Demo, which is normally in the right both of which are on the left on this weapon. And if you want a regular reload perk, you can use something like Rapid Hit. But then in the right, you have all kinds of damage perks. So Drone Junkie would be good for grenade builds. Rampage is just the old classic. Then you even have something like One for All, which might be better for harder content. Or if you have something like Match Game, you have Adaptive Munitions to break all shields. So there's all kinds of really cool rolls this weapon can get. So it's definitely one you probably want to be able to craft to be able to craft exactly the role you want. But the two I'd be going for is probably Dragonfly Rampage. 
then maybe something like demo and one for all or munitions for harder content at the number seven spot we have the funnel web which is the void smg which was like the meta of the season and the reason it's so low on this list is because you probably already have it to be honest because it was so hot for void 3.0 and the perks you want on this thing is in left you want subsistence or maybe perpetual motion if you want a more classic reload perk and the right frenzy or i believe a drone junkie is the better pick especially for void 3.0 this weapon is all around extremely good on void and just good in general but there is no way to directly farm for this weapon because it is a real drop so you just kind of have to get lucky if you didn't farm it early on when that chest name was around for number six i have the augma which is a solar pulse rifle which is also a real drop but this has one of the most unique roles the game has ever seen this thing might be like the meta for a lot of solar 3.0 builds if you can find one with these roles so the rules I'm talking about is in the left it has Demolitionist. Then in the right it has Dragonfly, which would be really good for like group Aquir. Or it has Wellspring. So Wellspring plus Demo would be absolutely insane for just getting your grenade and all of your abilities back on Solar 3.0. Or you can even get Adrenal Junkie, which will be perfect to pair with Solar Grenades for all those 3.0 builds. It even has Munitions in left and the disruption break on the right, so there's all kinds of really crazy combos you can get on this weapon. But unfortunately, as of right now, it is a real drop, so it's kind of hard to farm. I don't have any of these rules I'm talking about myself, and it seems like Solar 3.0 will be next season, so this is definitely one that if you have some of these rules I mentioned, definitely hang on to them, because they might be absolutely insane for a lot of builds next season. Following up the Augma at number 5, we have the Explosive Personality for kind of the same reasons for Solar 3.0, which should be next season. Because this is a Solar Waveframe GL that you can craft at the helm. So first, Feeding Frenzy, if you're going to be using this as like your main weapon and having it out all the time, it would probably get more ammo and fast reload, or just auto-loading if you're going to be shooting it and then pulling back out your primary. Then in the right, there's a few damage perks you can get. Frenzy, the old classic. Or one for all, which would be kind of interesting on this weapon. I think Frenzy would be better in a lot of situations, but the one I'm more interested in is going to be Golden Tricorn for solar builds. And the way this perk works, if you've never used it, is you first get a kill with this weapon, then get a kill with one of your abilities, and it will increase the damage buff and duration. And I believe it is 50%, which is tied with multi kill clip times three for the highest damage buff in the game. So if you pair that with something like Phantom Might, you know, you have a really high damage GL that'll be hitting all kinds of stuff because it is a wave frame. At the number four spot, I have the Cataclysmic or the Reed's Regret, either or. More or less, you know, just a linear fusion. You should still have one. They aren't necessarily as meta as they were last season, but they're still extremely good for sustained DPS and total damage output. And I haven't made a video breaking down this one, so I'm not quite sure exactly like what rolls would result in the highest DPS. But there are some really good total damage output combos on this weapon so you can get something like four times the charm and clown cartridge or even high impact reserves and those two rolls should greatly increase your total damage output and still maintain pretty good dps so this could be a really good linear fusion rifle if you don't have the reads regret or if you just don't want to play trials at the number three spot we have the under your skin which is the void bow you can craft this season and overall i'm just a huge fan of this bow for both general gameplay and in game so for just general gameplay, if you want to like just shoot bows left and right, you can use Archer's Tempo plus successful warm up, and that results in extremely low draw time, almost like Hush. And you pair that with something like Volatile Rounds, it is a really good combo. But then for harder content, I like Archer's Tempo plus the munitions to break all the shields, or you could even try out something like Dragonfly. Overall, really good bow for both Void 3.0 builds and in-game content. Then at number two, we have the Palmera, which is definitely the DPS meta right now with Iznagi's Burden. And the role you want to pull off that combo is going to be enhanced auto-loading. Then in the right, I prefer less impression from most boss fights because it will result in the highest total damage output. But Explosive Light will be a little bit more consistent if you're not familiar with last impression of the delay it adds. So one of those two damage perks will be the best in the right and pair that with the enhanced auto-loading and you're good to go. Then at the number one spot, we have the Forbearance, the Raid Waveframe GL, which is arguably one of the coolest and best weapons the game has ever seen. So not only is it Waveframe, in the right, it also has Chain Reaction, which is one of my favorite combinations the game has ever had. I love Waveframes, I love Chain Reaction, and this is the only one in the game with both. 
then left you pretty much just want ambitious or surplus and you're good to go and this scene is not only extremely strong as is i think it'll be pretty much the meta for arc builds and arc 3.0 whenever that comes out so yeah definitely get one of these with chain reaction it is just that good and that rounds out my top 10 weapons to get from the witch queen dlc let me know what your list would look like down in the comments below like usual thanks for watching catch you guys next time